right. Meeting is being recorded and transcript. Enable. Also oh, right. started. Yes. Start right. started. Good. So welcome to the Chaos Community Meeting, July 19th, 2022. Um, meetings are minutes are in there. And I will also share them so that you can play along on the home game. So there was some discussion about necessary metrics work we might do and strategies for aligning software with OSPO needs. Um, was this from the value group or did, was it from yeah. somewhere else? Okay. Yeah. So, so for example, um, there might be metrics that don't exist yet that we need to create, I think is the thing. Um, I think the, the, yeah. where the conversation kind of went was the value working group has had several different forms over yes. the course of the last, I don't know, several, three, three, I would say, say several purposes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it seems to kind of drift every now and then. And um, so one of the, the discussions that we were having in the value meeting was really trying to, to focus the value working group on supporting OSPOs. Like what are the, and this would be academic OSPOs and um, corporate OSPOs. And so kind of trying to answer the questions or connect more deliberately with the work that say the to-do group is doing or um, there's a group called OSPO++, which is kind of the academic group that looks at OSPOs in the university setting. Mm -hmm. Try to collect, collect, connect more deliberately with that work and find ways to support the needs of the different OSPOs or the different discussions that are going on. Yep. So that was one of the, that was the suggestion that came out of value. There were, I think then some follow-ons to that were some of these discussions are also occurring like inherently in risk in the risk working group. So these are some, yep. Some OSPO discussions for sure. Yep. Um, and so like, should, should these two be brought together? These two working groups, I don't, um, should they stay separate? How do we coordinate? If we were going to do this, how would we coordinate, um, the work and the effort between the two different working groups? Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> it went even further, which was, uh, should we sunset some of the working groups? So for example, uh, Sean, you had mentioned that perhaps the evolution working group has not like run we its course, to, but- We need to do, yeah. The, the, the basic stuff is there and um, there may not be a lot of additional metrics we need to create that describe evolution. That couldn't be handled. Uh, risk or, yeah like yeah. if there's things that logically belong there um i think there'd be people to do the work i just haven't we haven't had a, i think a lot of the new things that ospos have been wanting in particular are are having happening in discussion and risk and value okay that's my own and, and dei and common i mean then i think they're happening less in evolution but i think it's a lot of that's because we have those activity metrics which are kind of the original open source software metrics and one of the discussion from that value group was uh, making an uh, intentional effort to connect with the ospo folks so that we can hear their voice and like, bring those metrics and right now the discussions are happening in their domain we are very really separate so maybe an effort uh, intentional effort to connect these two to bring those metrics. So that's that. Those yeah. are all those points. That's a lot of that's a lot. It was kind of three things. One was yeah. what's the what's the 
premise for the value working group. That's number one. And that kind of spurred the second question was, if we're gonna focus on OSPOs in the value working group, how do we connect with the other OSPO work that's occurring in chaos or maybe OSPO specific work that's occurring in chaos? And then subsequently the third was, should we actually like stop meeting for some of the working groups, which is fine. You know what I mean? The work changes over time. And do we do we stop? And to your point, Sean, like maybe if there's an evolution metric, we could just have an ad hoc meeting to help kind of push that through. Those those metrics do need to be updated. Yeah. Like there's there's update work that needs to be done, but yeah. new metric work I think will be lighter. Okay. So I would uh uh I, I, I like the I like the idea of kind of value kind of changing their focus a little bit. Uh, so I think in looking at the metrics that value has now, like value is not really a great place to actually kind of define metrics. Value is a better place to to build models, right? Or to to answer questions for uh, for OSPOs in the case you just. Uh, uh, so I would, uh, uh, I think one of the one of the issues that we're running into right now with these working groups is that there is a there's a big move towards everyone wants to everyone wants to define models, uh, and and we're kind of getting off the uh, we are kind of getting off the metrics. I don't I don't think we've identified or identified and defined all the metrics that we need yet. Uh, I think that work has kind of taken a backseat to these collections of metrics and models that we're that we're creating. So I think maybe uh, uh, anyway. So that might be that's okay. Just my thoughts on it. So I think what we're so one of the things we we find when we create metrics models though is sometimes the metrics we need to incorporate into the models don't exist and they have to be created. And I don't think we've actually built a workflow for that. Uchi, okay, somebody left the people in. So I don't have an answer for that, I guess. But. So Kevin, what were your thoughts on? Uh, generally speaking, I think, you know, risk and value are, are great places to build models. Uh, and I think kind of common and evolution and probably DEI are great places to define metrics. And then I would I would I would say that uh, DEI is a good place to define models as well. Uh, but I, I do think we still need to do the metric that metrics definition work. Uh, so maybe the, uh, you know, the but maybe the, the focus of risk and value becomes more about building models to answer questions for specific contexts, right? You know, risk and value are kind of flip sides of the same coin a little bit, right? So the, the audience is just a little bit different. Do other people have thoughts? Kind of curious. I mean, I, I don't oppose any of these ideas. I mean, I think I think the stuff that's OSPO relevant and risk can be distributed in, in a way that packages, you know, models or metrics that are OSPO related together. So I don't I don't know, for example, that value would, based on what I see here, be in the risk space very much. Like I don't. Unless, yeah, I mean, I'm right. I don't, I don't see how like they could just combine into a single meeting. Yeah, because the the risk, I'll say, the risk discussions get pre pre involved, and so there's a lot of context around where that working group is. Yeah, no, I that's that's completely fair. I mean, the the audiences are different, so the 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 models are going to be different, right? Well, the, the audiences might be the same. But they're... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, at least from perspective of one OSPO, but not necessarily just us as an OSPO, more of a use case within a company. When you are considering the usage of a project, you're looking at its value to its risk yeah. as 
part of a broader evaluation of what is it going to provide in terms of value support use in our own context, but what risk am I assuming by bringing this into my code base? So I think from just a practical standpoint, those two conversations in theory should go hand in hand. It's about balancing the value to the risk. Um, I think in terms of metrics definition, I think there's still a bit of separation, but it one almost makes, I like, I kind of like the idea of just having a little bit more alignment or visibility between the groups. I think I have attended a value working group before. I probably should go back. I think it's harder to make that time slot for me, but I think following what's happening in that progression could hopefully generate more alignment because I could see models that do touch both spaces um, for those sort of more holistic evaluation questions. Got it. And does risk meet every week? Every other week. Every other week? On um, Thursdays at, I think, 1 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Um, what if we just slotted value? On alternating weeks? Yeah. I mean, you could. That would move. that. The trick with the risk time, of course, is it sort of shuts out Europe. Um, yeah. Well, in value right now, we're not really getting people from Europe. No, and we weren't getting people from Europe on risk initially, and that's why we moved our time to one that worked better for the people who are engaged. Um, but, Don, what do you, what do you think Don is UK. So yeah, both, Don, both the meetings are happening on the same day. Like in the morning, we have uh, value, and in the evening, we have the risk. Okay. So the day is same, but like timing is different. And I, I think common is common is the other one that occurs at the same time as value currently. Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. but that is the alternative week for the common. So value and risk happens on the very same day, and common happens on the alternative week, uh, the other week. Gotcha. Um, Don leads common. Sophia. Awesome. Yeah. Which is the third working group that I think is they cover territory that Ospos explicitly look at with regards to the people and place questions that span the rest of the metrics, those have lived in common. I'm just trying to think if there's it sounds like um like keeping them as their own working groups still is cool. Um, but if we could get maybe some alignment between the two, and maybe that alignment starts with just kind of putting them back to back, like not back to back, but like whatever Thursdays, alternating, or, yeah, weeks. alternating weeks, that might help a little bit, maybe. Don't know. It might. I mean, I mean it would certainly um, be easier for from some perspectives. Is doesn't Kate join? Kate risk? joins risk. Yeah, I think I think um, we get uh, Kate and David Wheeler and an occasional other okay. LF person. Lucas joins as well. Yep. Yep. Because um, I, I know that Kate has the yeah. value as well, <clears throat> and so that might just from a time perspective. Yeah, if you adopted the alternating weeks with risk at the same time. Presume you know, I don't know. She had already had, you I know, the trick with Kate course. is she sometimes yeah. already has the alternating. Of things. course. <laughs> um, Vinod, does that work for you? Yes. Yeah, both of the weeks will work for me. How about other people on this call? And I mean, we don't have to decide right now. We're just trying to get like a. I mean, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it'll work for me until January 20th. Okay. I have a class. I'll have very a call specific. Of a yeah, <laughs> I'll have a class in the spring that occurs in conflict with that time, but okay. it's quite a ways away. Mm -hmm. Worry about that then. Well, because exactly. we'll the risk would have to change then too, probably. Uh, yeah. Okay. Unless I can discourage students from registering for that class. That's a good idea. I, I do think the uh, the morning meetings are a little more inclusive. 
so they are yeah that, i mean we had some tr i mean we had some trouble getting a risk meeting that lined up for the people who were engaged in that working group but we have changed it before and it wouldn't be without precedent to see what other times work for people so kevin you're you don't want to change it is that well, I'm just saying the, the morning morning meeting times are generally more inclusive. So if we're if we're changing things, we should probably do the more inclusive thing. However, uh, to to Sean's point, if the if the people that want to go to that meeting uh, and have expressed interest in going to that meeting or can only go in the afternoon, then then I suppose that's what we should do. So, well, yeah, it's um I, we recognize it's an imperfect choice and. Um, yeah, it's rec it's recognized as a generally imperfect choice. It's like a bad time for the rest of the world, except for North America, and uh, on many levels. So, but I don't, I don't, I don't have a strong opinion about. I mean, I I think I could just we just ask the risk working group if there's another time that would work for them the next time we meet. When I'm looking through the value minutes right now trying to see who attends it's uh, most of the time uh stephen and Meku. Yeah. people also join the meetings yeah i join value when i can yeah. it does occur at a weird time for me though on a weird day of the week okay maybe, and, maybe. and i think it's because it, maybe it's because it's always the same week as risk that i get jammed up and don't make it i don't know Maybe if we just asked, did a poll or, or asked the community yeah. what times would work better for them. I mean, going back to so January, there have been like five different people in value, all US based for what it's worth. And I learned that it, it snowed in March in Colombia. I'm here to help. As I was as I was scrolling through the minutes and we had to add things. <laughs> All right. It's not, not snowing now. No. <laughs> it's be like a hundred degrees. Mar today. March tenth, it snowed in Colombia. Yeah. Well, today it's going to be a hundred. So. Yeah, the snow is melted now. Then. Yeah. The, my roof is melted. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Sure. So I'll put it on the agenda to ask the risk working group uh, what other times may work. Well, to Kevin's point, maybe we can put it on general channel as well. Sure. Just yeah. to ask. This is kind of what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the thought is maybe there are people that are interested in that group that haven't been coming because the time doesn't work out. Yeah, I mean, it could become, it certainly could have become a self fulfilling prophecy. It's worth asking. All right, cool. And then, Sean, what about that kind of that last point of the evolution working group? Do you think the meetings should still continue? Um, they, we need to have meetings periodically, at least, because we have uh, metric work to do, like edits to do. And coordinate around. Um, yep. So I would say let's keep it on the calendar and see okay. if the group can uh, plow through some of that. Okay. Um, for now. Right on. I mean, when we right now we show up and we work if there's enough people to work, and maybe we just work any as long as there's more than me, um, we work anyway. Alrighty. Um, project badging had a discussion. Matt, do you want to cover that? Oh, sure. So we've been having the discussion about a part automated process and a part peer review process. Um, there are kind of a number of, it's a kind of a pro con list for automated, um, with kind of the, the general sense of, of concern that comes from automation that removes the human the human out of the loop to actually do reviews. Um, so that's that's kind of that first one. So that's kind of where we're at right now. 
Um, personally, I've been I've been thinking about project badging quite a bit, and I just cannot like get my I just can't think about how we could possibly handle project badging as the chaos project. It's like event different. event badging, fine. Like those are finite and but with a with a peer review process that I just don't know gets, how it's possible. I mean we can create the badge and see who comes, but you're right, without any automation, the scaling is gonna yeah, scales yeah. the concern. Mm -hmm. um, like if we get 300 projects that want to be badged, that, that puts a pretty heavy reviewing load onto a community that's not sized for it. Um, that's exactly it. No. And like if I don't want to put the effort into like building a nice pro program and promoting the program and like recruiting reviewers and and then we just it just doesn't work well. So I just I cannot. I just can't. Yeah, it's the scale thing. It like gives me a headache. Yeah, the yeah the only way I can imagine getting past it would be to make a strong request for projects that are are badged to contribute reviewing time for other projects. But then we would be facilitating a fairly large. Um, I don't know, it's yeah. almost like an Amazon. It's like. Uh, whatever the wise level of the mechanical Turk is, yeah. um, <clears throat> you know, it would, would be a lot of human work it would be coordinating. Yeah. And so to your point, data privacy is a concern there. I wonder, uh, I wonder if there is a way that we could have them like a, a way we could create a form that would allow them to basically badge themselves. The applicants. Yeah. Like uh, where we, we 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 ask the questions in such a way that by by answering the questions they are in in essence badging themselves right so I mean there we'd require kind of a little bit of uh, trust and honesty but at the same time even in the even if we were having someone else badge them we're still kind of asking for some trust and honesty because they could be they could be lying to us so. Just a thought. I'm not. I'm not sure what that would look like, but yeah. Um, right. I, go ahead, Sean. I mean, I think we'd have to. The DEI working group had a pretty extensive discussion about the. I think credibility was the concern of not having a human in the loop, um, and but scale is the concern of having to have a human in the loop and, um, autom you know, an automated form, you know that there's precedent for that. It did not increase the uptake, for example, of the court CII badging. Um, it's still got a pretty limited uptake, but they also have an extremely long form um, that requires a lot of information. Let's say that part again, not the length of the form, but like they had an automated part that did checking or yeah, something? It's all, it's all, yeah, they do have Part of it automated, like checking to see that you have license files and license declarations and a code of conduct file. So what they can automate, they do automate, but other in other places you're vouching for yourself. Right. Okay. Um, and for, that's no, where they were talking about. Yep. Yeah. And and it's a it becomes a long form that you know at the end of the day, because it includes the form includes both the things that are automated and the things that are not automated. So it's like a partially filled out form that you get to finish. And I'm not advocating that, but I'm, I'm suggesting that if we go that direction, we want to keep the form simple enough that it didn't take, you know, that the filling it out didn't become a giant obstacle for people. Because I think our goal is to, to get, one of our goals is to spread the word or increase DEI in open source. And so a badging, mm -hmm program is one way to raise the profile of that effort, I think. For sure. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it's just the trade offs with how much like if we won't, I mean, I th I've got a pretty strong like, we shouldn't have anything fully automated for this vibe from the DEI working group. That's um, a direct vibe. That, but we didn't discuss a form specifically. Um, 
so I, I don't know if the thoughts would be exactly the same or if, if that's, I mean, it's certainly worth bringing up in discussion in that working group as a next step. I'm curious if other people on the call have comments on this as well. I know a lot of you have done badging work. All right, I, I think too, maybe we should um, talk with Demetrius with All In, because we've, we've had this conversation before too, maybe not quite this direct, mm -hmm. but I'd really like to to kind of hear what she's thinking about too. I mean, I think, I think, um, yeah, we can, when I talked with her about the like first level automated badging, the, the aim was all about promotion of the idea that DEI should be incorporated into all open source work. And like the DEI.md file could be a symbol, like a code of conduct file to like a signal to the other to the rest of the open source community that you, you know your project cares about DEI, um, and so the idea was that they had rolled out other forms of badging that way at GitHub, and from a platform perspective, then it would let both GitHub, GitLab, and any platform roll something out. But this is bringing up some of the discussion we had was we don't want to be the maintainers of that software, so. The, set, the, set, the second point, Matt? No, no, this was on Justin's. I'm Justin had two points as well. Um, yeah, I can I can go on that. Um, bandwidth is great, so I'm going to go off. Uh, but my thinking there is, like, I know of some communities both, I guess there's, like, the strategic side of this work, and there's that software piece. Um, so, like, on the software side, I know there's other communities that also have these badging tools and platforms that are also open source. Uh, there's the Badger project, which is doing, like, a whole platform of this kind of stuff, and have really thought through the, the problem area uh, in a lot of deep ways. There's also communities like Fedora, um, which has their own badging site, and people do activities in the project to get badges. Um, so there's that software piece of maybe like if we're thinking about the maintainability around the software end, well, maybe instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, we can partner with someone else who's uh, worked in this space for a lot longer. Oh, Mozilla badging. I, I don't know if they're still doing open badges, but that's another one that comes to mind. The other one is around the strategic end. Um, if there are certain thematic areas, so thinking about DEI or maybe... Um, well, depending on what the focus could be, we could look at some of the other communities across the chaos network. Like I can think of the sustain OSS community might be one that could be interested in some kinds of badging, depending on what the focus was. Um, so maybe it's finding the right kind of partners who would be willing to co-lead and, and join in this effort instead of us trying to pilot it, scale it and run it. when we also have all the other things that we're doing across chaos. Mm -hmm. um, metrics and um, models. So that might be my thinking is trying to find the right uh, connections, both on that software end and also on the strategic, uh, like the actual badging effort itself over. Gotcha. Yeah, I like the, I'm, I'm very curious about this Badger project that you mentioned. So maybe there is some stuff there that we could employ. I, I, I do like the general idea of trying to partner with other established organizations because I think that is versus it just being sort of open. I think the data privacy concern is just if we ask people to submit sensitive information and then share it broadly, it's not really kosher. I know kosher is not the right word in that context, but just like acceptable. Um, but if we work with a partner organization specifically, then it's still contained within that agreement. Um, I was also just thinking that the work you've done, Matt, to sort of define what would go into the badge or what would go into the evaluation and the suggestion of creating the, the markdown file that speaks to those points, I think that's still a positive contribution to the space. Like even without having a badging program, it's just, I, I'm not even sure what, what that would be in terms of a, a model or a metric, but not to say that we're launching a program, but in, in the same way that I want to say that it's going to have the same level of 
adoption is like a code of conduct, but saying that this could be another way that projects can state their intentions and hold themselves accountable to their own DEI efforts. Like I think having a tool like that is still a valuable suggestion and whether or not projects adopt it is up to them, but like, I, I don't, I don't want it to see it. Like, I don't, I think it still could be valuable from the tool perspective versus just a badge. Cool. Thank you. I, I agree. I, I yeah. like the idea. Yeah, I certainly wasn't trying to get rid of the DEI.nb file because I really do like that. Um, but I also, I like the idea. It was mostly just like, how do we get that thing reviewed <laughs> is what it comes down to. Like, right. how do we review 300 DEI.md files? Um, but I also like the idea of, of thinking about ways to simply encourage people or projects to include such a file, irrespective of a review. Like, this is just a nice way for you as a community to express how you address these four particular metrics within your community. I like that idea. Which is not not badging. It's just it's just ways to encourage um, communities to communicate that way. Yeah. And I think like right now, just on on the platforms, I don't know specifically what GitLab does, but I think they do something very similar. Like establishing your project includes like license files, code of conduct files, a README, you know, and GitHub calls your project you know completely set up. When you have all of those documents and i think if the platforms just added the dei.md to what they checked maybe that's not an explicit badge but it is a signal mm -hmm. all right cool uh, and i think i think looking into these other like projects and how they're doing it is probably going to be pretty useful too And Sophia, you were you were saying that's like keep keep the um, you know software part of it on the table is something we might contribute to if I'm hearing correctly. Um, I mean, I mean possibly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's still really hard to do to do it well. Like I think the only way that this program like this would scale, even with the partner support, I think would have to be a combination of automated and peer reviewed yeah um, I, in the sense where like either it's a form or audit like some sort of software that's looking for key things but then you still have to have someone go in and verify um, but at least if it's been pre-screened that ideally should reduce some of the overhead but i mean i was also thinking about it from the sense of maybe it would, software would enable better batching so maybe instead of say doing this as, as they come in maybe once a week you do X amount kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then doing them all at once yeah. with the support of software, like it's it's still a lot of time, and it would still have scaling issues. But software can always can make it better, but can't do all the things. It's kind of my feeling about software on this, anyway. Yeah, it doesn't put the person in the loop all by itself. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. These are really good ideas. Again. Um, I think this. I, don't, I think this discussion. I don't. I feel like it's moving forward um, positively. So again, thank you. Yeah, and then um, our last item on the agenda is metric tagging, which has been the topic of um, some discussion at, on the knowledge base project and across the web project, and I think even in this meeting. And Kevin, maybe you want to summarize kind of where I think we've landed. Unless Kevin's no longer here, in which case I can do that. I think he's having internet trouble. Yeah, I am here, but my connection's not stable. So if someone else wants to take it, I'd appreciate it. So there's a there's a list of it was previously 12 um, context kegs. There we go. Thank you, Matt. Um, that essentially we would choose any metric would be tagged according to one to at most two of these and these are what we're calling context tags and they make a standard list of tags searchable um, but by keeping this standard list of tags we're avoiding a core i would call it core tag tag explosions where you just have 12 different ways you know 50 words for snow 
um, to use the album title of Kate Bush. Um, and it just gets kind of messy. And keyword tags would be different. We'd, we'd max them out at six with recommendations of two to four. And these could be really anything. So for example, um, licensing risk is not a, a tag above. Um, and in fact, risk itself is not a tag above. So we probably would include risk and the particular kind of risk is a tag on a risk metric. So yes, the, I'm going to That's the sort of proposal, yes. I think. Yeah. I guess I think Kevin added those. So yeah, these would be, you would add two context tag to your metric or your metrics model. You would add up to two to four, up to six. Yeah. More and specific those, kind of keyword tags. And ideally the working groups would, you know, show some discipline around keywords. The second one. And this is, there's a lot here to help with the knowledge base and how this helps with searchability of uh, metrics. Yeah. Uh, my question is how do we distinguish between context and keywords? Are those the context is from, it would be control list. It would be, have to be from this list. Okay. Don't, don't create keyword tags that match context tags. Okay. And then like, I'm trying to, okay, I got a context. Okay. In certain domain, I'm developing a particular metric with a, within a working group. Uh, I got that idea that this is the context in which this metric is being developed, maybe a value from an organization side, a value from an individual side, and it has to go within that uh, 12 numbers. But then what is a keyword in that? As an example, like in that list, the context tags dependencies are not there. Okay. But that would be like an ecosystem, likely an ecosystem oh, okay. context. And so depend, this is really looking at dependencies between things. Okay. And the idea is the way we've produced the metrics isn't necessarily, and it in fact, almost certainly isn't the best way to organize them for people to consume. And this is working to address that issue so that our metrics are more easily consumed by people. You don't have to guess which working group something was developed in any longer. Okay. And how these will be like, are we going to have a format uh, in the metric template that uh, we define or we, when we create a pull request and do it in the GitHub? I'm just trying to understand. That. I would think we would add tags as a, keyword following the specifications set forth by the knowledge base web project group committee. So I don't know explicitly what the format would be, but I'm suspecting it might be a header called tags with Ooh. some tags in it. <laughs> Does anybody know, can you, we had talked about maybe have, you know how we have the synonyms line? Yeah. So like that would potentially go away and it would be replaced by context tags and then a new line called keyword tags. Um, does anybody know if you can, to a markdown file, add meta info? There is, I think, a, a hack for doing that. You mean like just... So you don't think, see it on the page itself, yeah, but it's like, like there and it could be searched. I've seen... Uh, stuff that sort of does that with html blocks inside of markdown i don't know if anybody knows a better way okay that was the only it was either putting it on the page or like kind of embedding it in the markdown like not seen those yeah. are the two kind of ways to potentially do it i was thinking of like since we have context limited to the 12 uh, that can be github tags where the way we assign the tagging to any particular Thing. So maybe we assign the tags, those 12 tags, and we have keywords within the metric inside, like a synonym. My guess is it has to be in that markdown somewhere. Yeah, I think it would be because the thing that we would be tagging would be a pull request into the markdown, not the actual markdown itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now so the, the, yeah, the platform tags wouldn't actually work in this case. Sorry. So Kevin, how did we do on that? Was that, you can give a... <laughs> did we did we get uh, all the points? Uh, yeah, I think so. Right on. Mm -hmm.
Do you all want seven minutes back? <laughs> or are there other topics to discuss? Um, no, this is, well, maybe just one more thing on the metric tagging. Um, Kevin, do you have like a time frame that would be, or would you hope that this is done before the next release, like Dublin kind of thing? Like ask the working groups to look at this per metric? Uh, so actually what I was, what I was thinking is as, as Yash is building the knowledge base, uh, he's going to start giving me a, a list of the, the metrics he's pulling in. And as okay. he's, as he's doing that, I will go and I will maybe put in a pull request for each of these individual metrics to add this content. And then if the working groups approve it, uh, then that would, that would be cool. Otherwise they can, uh, uh, maybe provide a alternative uh, okay. context. So uh, I'm, I, I'd like to take a little bit of the burden off the working groups. So I'll just, I'll throw the PRs in and see if it works for them basically. And if it, if it doesn't work, they can, they can let me know how to change it. Okay, so basically you, you're proposing like you would pick maybe a couple based on your read of the metric or the metric model that you think yeah. would be appropriate. And then the PR can change accordingly. Yeah, and then okay. in the in the future, as metrics and models are defined and created, uh, these these things would be this it would be part of that process. So the okay. working groups would take that over completely in the future. But okay. but for the knowledge base at this time, I think the the easiest thing would be for me to just do it. Okay, I can give you a hand uh, and get approval. There are, there are seventy metrics, but I'd be happy to give you a hand with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Sophia has a quick chaos kind of question. Yep. Um, I know we had already let speakers know that, that their talks are submitted and the next step was public publicizing our schedule or at least talk overview. I have gotten a couple inquiries from folks that are like, oh, I'm interested in ChaosCon. I did, and then there's no other details. I did include the details of the talks that were accepted in the ChaosCon oh, newsletter. There? In the ChaosCon newsletter okay. that was just sent out today, which... I don't know. One of the, getting, I was supposed to get it out all the weeks that Elizabeth was gone. I did it once. So, uh, so is that? I don't know if, where to. Let me do that. Like, how do you get that? that? <laughs> so hang on. Let me see if I can find. So it. we do have a list that we have shared. We just it isn't on the website yet. Yeah, uh, it is on the. Well, I think it's on the website. Oh, it might be. On, yeah, it might be on. Uh, the blog. It's on a blog post. Let me um, put this link in the. That's the link to it. And I'll also throw it in the chat. And actually, Sophia, thank you. That's on me too. I said I would put together like a preliminary schedule based on what was accepted. I'll do that right after this call and then share it out on the ChaosCon list. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that the definitive schedule is needed just so like, if we have our topics up, if people yeah. are registering, they, will, they might just glance at it because that could be the deciding factor whether or not they want to go if they see what the topics are being covered. So just figured. Cool. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Now we hey. have. Hey. Are you great? Are Thanks. you gonna? That's perfect. Are you gonna create the schedule uh, for the website, or are you gonna create that separately? And I was just gonna first create it separately so that people could we could talk about it if people have like changes they want to make to the order mm -hmm. okay I mean, yeah there's no order implied i believe in the list that i posted that okay. just, I figured we do have was. some we do have some previous schedule markdown mm -hmm. files in the website oh, repository sure. okay uh, that might be useful to uh like even if you're not wanting to wanting it to go to the website right away uh, those those markdown files might be useful okay all right cool and if you do need it to go to the website, I suppose the let me know. Uh, I, I haven't, I haven't changed anything on the website lately because uh, okay. uh, I don't think anyone's asked me to. Oh, yeah, uh, so. you are correct. Well, and um, yeah, be careful. We have to be careful when we upgrade to WordPress six dot x because six dot zero dot zero broke some stuff on some websites I use. So I haven't tried six dot zero dot one yet. Just be careful in there.
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Sorry, we've been talking a lot about that in the rest of Yeah, question. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have a minute you. left. We're good. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you, everybody. See you next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.